It's starting to look like everything that's gone down in Afghanistan was all a part of the plan. And many people speculated this. Tucker Carlson was having a conversation, I think it was with Glenn Greenwald on his show, and they entertained the possibility that Biden meant to do this. And there's a reason why we botched Afghanistan. I don't know exactly why. Some speculate it's to punish those who are anti-war or to create a justification for going back in or maybe even going to war with Iran, because now Iran's going to be able to get access to a ton of this weaponry that the Taliban has, which is ours, and it could cause all sorts of problems, and then create an expansive threat to other countries. And the U.S. will go, oh, no, look what we have to do now. I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. You have the Mujahideen. You had the United States providing funding, training, and resources to these people. And then what, you know, a couple decades later, or you know, or so, they're like, oh, no, now we have to go fight these people. Oh, geez, they're the problem. It's, it's their fault. So we go in, we make a problem. And a decade later, we're like, oh, no, look. So what's going to happen now? In 10 years, they're going to be like a rogue squad of fighter planes. And they're not going to tell you that, oh, but they were ours and we left them there. Check out this story. As Biden repeats claim that nobody could have known Afghan army would collapse, bombshell transcript from July reveals he pressured Afghan President Ghani to create perception Taliban wasn't winning, whether it's true or not. This, my friends, paints a very damning picture. That means Biden knew privately and everything was falling apart. And what did he do? Nothing. I mean, he went to the president of Afghanistan and said, keep it on the DL. Here's the story. And boy, I I want to go through the timeline for you because Biden gave a a statement where he said, it's never going to happen. The the, the Taliban aren't going to take over. The only problem, they abandoned Bagram Air Force Base in the middle of the night, shutting off the power and not even telling the Afghan security forces. Tell me that wasn't on purpose. President Joe Biden wanted the now departed Afghan president to create the perception that his government was capable of holding off the Taliban, an indication he knew it was only a matter of time before the U.S. ally fell to the Islamic group, even while reassuring Americans at home that it would not happen. In the last phone call between Biden and his Afghan then counterpart, Ashraf Ghani, the American president said they needed to change perceptions about the Taliban's rapid advance, whether it is true or not, according to excerpts published on Tuesday. The call took place on July 23rd, weeks before the fall of Kabul. But Biden on Tuesday repeated his assertions that his team was caught flat footed by the rapid Taliban takeover of the country. Quote, the assumption was that more than 300,000 Afghan national security forces that we had trained over the past two decades and equipped would be a strong adversary in their civil wars with the Taliban. Biden told the nation in a televised speech from the White House on Tuesday, that assumption that the the Afghan government would be able to hold on for a period of time beyond military drawdown turned out not to be accurate. But I still instructed our national security team to prepare for every eventuality, even that one. And that's what we did. So we were ready when the Afghan security forces, after two decades of fighting for their country and losing thousands of their own, did not hold on as long as anyone expected. Four weeks before Kabul collapsed, Ghani pleaded for more air support and money for soldiers who had not had a pay raise in a decade. Biden knew all of this, lied to the public, told Ghani to shut up and and act like everything's cool before Kabul fell. Biden knew this was going to happen. It's no wonder when the corpses of fallen service members are being brought out That Joe Biden checks his watch and doesn't care about the people who died under his watch when he knew this was happening. He knew it was happening. He doesn't care about those people who would risk their lives. He doesn't care about the Americans who are left behind. And it's so strange to me how there is this, you know, some people who are trying to play middle of the road like, oh, conservatives, you know, all of a sudden now care about the Americans left behind. But it's not like they're, you know, uh, like the, the people being left behind. Are, are Americans, but they're like, you know, peop, many people who were born in other countries or they're born in Afghanistan. I, I don't I don't care. We have an obligation to American citizens. Joe Biden lied and people died. It's not some quip. It's 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 a fact. Joe Biden knew before the fall of Kabul, the Taliban was set to take over, lied to the American people. They abandoned the Air Force Base. 
before this, mind you, we'll go through the timeline. And in the end, it just seems like it's all on purpose. Because look, when he had this phone call and was talking about this, they could have said, okay, we now know the Taliban is, 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 is rapidly advancing. Let's get our troops back to Bagram Air Force Base. Let's, let's, let's reclaim Bagram. Let's, he didn't do it. No, he said, whatever. Hey, Karzai Airport. We'll, see, we'll let, them fend for, what, what, let them fend for themselves. Check this out. A transcript obtained by Reuters from an anonymous source reveals two leaders oblivious to the impending disaster and an American president focused on spinning the message. I don't think it's fair to say oblivious. They knew they were advancing. Quote, I, I need not tell you the perception around the world and parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there is a need, whether it is true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. The Taliban were already capturing district after district across the country, while the U.S. and Afghanistan were at loggerheads over tactics. In the months leading up to the, the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, which was completed on Monday, Biden was telling the public a different story that the withdrawal would be done smoothly, and that Washington's Afghan allies were in control. I don't think anybody anticipated that, Biden told a ABC News when asked about the swift disintegration of the Afghan security forces. In April, Biden said that the U.S. couldn't stay in Afghanistan forever, and that it was time to bring the troops home. I can respect that, absolutely. We'll do it responsibly, deliberately, and safely, and we will do it in full coordination with our allies and partners who now have more forces in Afghanistan than we do. And the Taliban should know that if they attack us as we draw down, we will defend ourselves and our partners with all the tools at our disposal. <laughs> and he didn't do it. Biden lied over and over and over again. When asked if a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan was inevitable, the president responded, no, it's not. I, I'm going to show you the timeline. He's lying. Biden said that the Afghan government has 300,000 well-equipped forces as well equipped as any army in the world, and an air force uh, against something like 75,000 Taliban. So on this phone call, when he said they had an air force, and the president said, we need air support, and the air force base had already long been abandoned and looted by civilians, Biden comes out and says, I got an air force, everybody. No, I, I'm sorry. Look, I don't know for sure, but if I, if I was a betting man, and I had to put money down on the table. I'd bet it was on purpose. It's not inevitable. When Biden was asked if he trusted the Taliban, the president replied, no, but I trust the capacity of the Afghan military, who is better trained, better equipped and more competent in terms of conducting war. The president was then asked about his own intelligence community's assessment that the Afghan government would likely collapse. That is not true. They did not reach that conclusion. The intelligence community did not say back in June or July that, in fact, this was going to collapse like it did, Biden told ABC News earlier this month. Biden said that he was not told that the Taliban would take over as quickly as they did. Instead, he said there was a possibility it would take more time. Not even close, Biden said. Behind the scenes, however, Biden apparently knew the situation was more precarious. Two weeks after his remarks to reporters denying that a Taliban takeover was inevitable, Biden and Ghani spoke for about 14 minutes on July 23rd. It was their last conversation before the Taliban captured the capital. Ghani fled the presidential palace, Kabul and the country on August 15th. By then, a chaotic evacuation was already underway, helping tens of thousands of people to, uh, to safety. As the cost of the 13 American troops and dozens of Afghans killed in a suicide attack uh, on, on the Kabul airport. But in mid-July, Biden was intent on Ghani delivering a public message and public plan that would shore up confidence in the Afghan government. You clearly have the best military. You have 300,000 well-armed forces versus 70, 80,000, and they're clearly capable of fighting well. We will continue to provide close air support if we know that the plan is, know what the plan is and what we are doing. He pushed Ghani to allow his defense minister, General Bismillah Khan Muhammad, uh, Muhammad, Muhammadi, to pursue a strategy that would focus on defending major population centers. And he urged the Afghan president to bring together some of the most powerful anti-Taliban warlords in a show of support to reverse perceptions of a crumbling government. But I really think, I don't know whether you're aware just how much the perception around the world is that this is looking like a losing proposition, which it's not. It is not that it necessarily is that. But so the conclusion I'm asking you to consider is to bring together everyone Former Vice President Abdul Rashid Dostum, 
to former President Hamid Karzai. And in between, he said, if they stand there and say they back the strategy you put together and put a warrior in charge, you know, a military man, Khan in charge of executing the strategy, and that will change perception and that will change an awful lot, I think. Ghani responded by saying Afghanistan was facing not just the Taliban, but their foreign backers. We are facing a full scale invasion composed of Taliban, full Pakistani planning and logistical support, and at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis, thrown into this. But he also asked that Americans, clo- uh, that asked that American close air support be front loaded to help with the challenges faced by the Afghan army immediately. Details of the conversation emerged a day after the last U.S. troops were flown out of Kabul, ending America's longest war. I love the leaks. Isn't it funny? Why? Why the leaks? Why is why is this being leaked out to people? Sure, making Biden look bad. You know, it's because the, the, the intelligence community and the deep state, the permanent government, whatever you want to call it, they love war. They want war. And when even Joe Biden says we're going to we're going to get out of Afghanistan and screws it all up, they still want the war. That's what I think, at least. Let me show you something. Not even close. Biden said no one predicted Taliban would take over so quickly. This story from August 20th, they mentioned in a July news conference, Biden had rejected the idea that a Taliban takeover was inevitable. No, it is not. He said, hadn't his own intelligence community made that conclusion? That is not true. During the ABC interview that aired Thursday, Biden said the idea that the, that the Taliban would take over was premised on the notion the Afghan army, which was larger and better equipped than the Taliban, would collapse. I don't think anybody anticipated that. I bring you now to the Wikipedia entry for Bagram Air Force Base, which is the centerpiece of the controversy, at least I believe it's fair to say, in Afghanistan. Let me read for, uh, read, read, read for you a few passages, starting with the early, uh, just one, one space, one, one uh, par- sentence earlier. On 20th November 2019, U.S. President Trump visited the Bagram airfield for the first time to celebrate Thanksgiving with the U.S. troops there. Next, as part of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan after nearly 20 years of continuous U.S. presence at the site, the Bagram Air Base was handed back to the Afghan government on 1 July 2020. The last remaining U.S. troops left the base by shutting off the electricity and slipping away in the night without notifying the Afghan armed forces. The base was looted by local civilians soon after U.S. forces left the area. The Afghan National Army Army later took control of the area and arrested some looters. On August 15th, Afghan troops stationed there gave up their position to the Taliban, losing control of the airfield. Joe Biden said to, to Ghani, it's not going bad. Tell everybody it's great. Why would they abandon the airfield in the dead of night, shutting out the electricity and not informing the Afghan National Army what they had done? Why would they do that on July 1st? And then Biden would come out a week later and say, no, the Taliban won't take over. Well, hold on. If you really believed that the Taliban wouldn't take over because the Afghan security forces had a powerful 300,000 person strong army and an air force, like they said, Why wouldn't you do a strategic handoff of the Air Force base to the Afghan National Army? Why wouldn't there be a transitional period where the Afghan National Army would be brought in and they would slowly start relieving, you know, uh, uh, Americans of command in the base and, and bringing them back, withdrawing them and then transferring that power to the Afghan National Army? I'm not I didn't serve in the military. I didn't, you know, uh, go overseas, but I can tell you this. Ain't nobody going to argue to me that it was the right thing to do to not tell the Afghan army you were abandoning the Air Force base in the dead of night. That makes no sense. And then for Biden to come out a week later and say, no, 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 everything's going to be fine. They're not going to take over. It's like, dude, you you crippled the Afghan national army. You pulled logistics. Contractors were pulled and you abandoned the Air Force base to looters without telling the, the Afghan forces and then expected them to be able to fight back. Mm, I don't think so. So what ended up happening? Well, one op ed I read from a military expert, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, was that American military doctrine is air is, is air strikes. It's air superiority. And while the Afghan National Army did have an air force. We, we abandoned them. We abandoned maintenance, logistics, and we abandoned Bagram in the dead of night without telling them. So Ghani told Biden 
weeks later, we need air support. That to me is really, really incredible. He said, we need this. Now think about this for two seconds. On July 23rd, the leaked calls reveal Joe Biden was saying it's looking bad. We want it. We want a message coming out saying it's not going bad. If they knew it was looking bad and people felt like, you know, things were falling, then uh, why could not have Joe Biden sent the, the U.S. troops, the couple thousand that he had stationed in Kabul to Bagram Air Force Base and start staging an evacuation? Now, I think it's fair to point out, perhaps it's because they're cowards. Biden felt it's, it's possible in this phone call. We need a morale booster. We need to rally everybody to hold the line, to hold the center. You know why I just don't believe that? Because of the Bagram Air Force Base thing. Biden kneecapped the Afghan National Army, at least in, in, in Kabul. Sent the troops to a civilian airport where it was going to be damn near impossible to get people in. Left the airport to looters. And you mean to tell me that I'm supposed to believe Biden in, was in, this was all an accident? It was all a big misunderstanding, a big mistake, a big tactical error? Yeah, you make it hard to believe. Sorry. The phone call is big. You know, learning about what he was saying behind the scenes is big. To tell the president that people around the world are saying it's going bad. So, so why do it? Why? I, I don't understand. What's the goal? Punishment? Instability? Crisis, chaos, you know, maybe we'll be out of Afghanistan now, but what happens in 10 years? Will the crisis get so bad in 10 years we're going to have a new ISIS? I mean, we already do, apparently. Is ISIS-K going to start taking control? Is Iran going to start teaming up with Afghanistan and engaging in these massive military exercises with their new air force? Take a look at this. Might of the Taliban Air Force. Islamists now have 48 aircraft, including Blackhawks and A-29 attack planes, after U.S. retreat left them with more air power than many NATO nations. Look at this. This is amazing. I, I, I love this. Taliban Air Force versus NATO. The U.S., 13,233 vehicles in their air force. The next biggest is France with 1,057. Turkey, 1,056. Italy, 867. And then we go down to Taliban, 48. So uh, I, I don't believe this is actually correct, a correct number, to be completely honest, because I thought it was more than that. But, you know, let's be fair. We'll just read what the news we, we have here. They have more than Slovenia, Macedonia, Albania, Albania, Bosnia, Lithuania, Montenegro, Estonia. Iceland has zero. Luxembourg has zero. 48 aircraft. So I, I, my understanding is that it was a lot more, but perhaps this is the official tally right now. 48. I thought it was like hundreds. But you know what? Either way, I think we, we, we get the point. The Taliban now has a massive, has massive military might. Ma and and, and I, I firmly believe it, it, they're going to start selling stuff to Iran. So what does this mean for us here at home? Well, I hope you all share stories like this. Ask these questions. If they knew things were going bad, why wouldn't they reinforce the Air Force Base and provide the air support requested by Ghani? Why would Joe Biden lie to the American people? Why would they keep U.S. men and women in uniform, service members, at the Abbey Gate when they knew an attack was imminent? Was this all on purpose? Why would Joe Biden check his watch every time the body of one of these men and women was brought out? Why would, why would he not care? Why would he roll his eyes? He never cared in the first place. And so I don't want to, you know, there's, I don't know if there's a conspiracy. I can tell you this. There's planning and there's failure and there's intent. But I'm, maybe there's no real goal, no real conspiracy. Biden's just saying to himself, I don't care. Get our troops out. Screw them. You know what? There are a lot of people who feel that way. A lot of isolationists in the United States who feel like we should have just pulled out and said, don't care, not Americans. Sorry. The problem is the Americans who are there, who are still trapped there. And we don't know the exact number. Some, there's low estimates. There's high estimates. There's the story yesterday of the woman who was shocked to find out that the last plane left and she couldn't get in. And I want you to remember this now when you look at that story about Bagram and what Biden was saying, that they had advanced warning the Taliban was moving in, that they had advanced time, ample time to get troops to Bagram, that they abandoned Bagram to looters. So when that woman, that American woman said, I went to the gate, I did everything they said, I had the secret code, I had the umbrella so they could see me. And they tear gassed us and I couldn't get in. 
if they were at Bagram, she would have gotten in. The Americans would have gotten out. So to me, maybe it is so simple to say that Joe, uh, Joe Biden just falls asleep in these meetings and no one around him cares to correct him. Kamala Harris is just laughing, saying, you know, soon will be my time because Biden's failing so miserably. They'll impeach him or remove him or he'll resign. And then she'll say, I, I'm going to come to save the day. They, they screwed this up so royally. I have to wonder if Millie and, and Harris and the people around Biden were just sitting there being like, I'm not going to be the one to say anything. Sycophants and yes men for a, a delusional old man who isn't fit for this job. Is that the cold reality of Afghanistan? Perhaps. So look, I'll, I'll end with this. I don't know if it's on purpose. I, I don't know because I can't read minds. But I, I think it's fair to say we can act as though it was, you know, regardless. What, what I mean is I will not give Biden the benefit of the doubt on this one. I will give him the, uh, the absolute derision and disdain and distrust, in which case, regardless of whether or not it was intentional, we should move swiftly to <laughs> impeach Joe Biden. I'll tell you this. I don't like the Republican Party. But if any Republican runs on the platform of immediately impeaching Joe Biden, they're going to sweep. And I'd vote for him. I don't even know. Some people have, you know, like we, I talked to Ian on Tim Cast IRL, and he says, at least Kamala Harris has got a brain. It's true. A nasty, she's a nasty person. But at least she's not, I don't know, Biden. But I'll tell you this, it's not enough. It's the whole administration. It's Millie. I don't see a way out of this. I really, really don't. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all then.